Very good morning, beloved in the Lord. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is the way, the truth, and life. In Him, through Him, by Him, with Him, all things are possible. We are gathered here this morning, beloved, to celebrate the life of Auntie Ida and to be part of the family as we mark time and reflect on the life and give God all the glory and honor for the life. <coughs> to whom can the Holy God be compared? Is there anyone else like him? Look up at the sky. Who created the stars you see? The one who leads them out like an army. He knows how many they are and calls each one by name. His power is great. Not one of them is ever missing. Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young or weak. Young people can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for you will find that strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Our call to worship will be led by Brother Campbell. <coughs> and his responsive. Good morning, everyone. Our call to worship is as follows. Gracious is our Lord who hears our cries. God is listening to us. Loving is our God who comes to us in our grief and in our sadness. Holy is our God who never lets death have the final word. Transformative is our God. Who can turn grief into hope and sadness into joy? Amen. Our opening prayer, the lighting of a candle, will be done by Marian Lali, our elder. We will need the uh, congregation um, that you assign someone to light the candle in the family. So, before we do that job, um, Ida, would you like an elderly in our church? And the member of the Women's Fellowship, and she also was a calling member and a deacon. Would you like an elderly in our church? And the member of the Women's Fellowship, and she also was a calling member and a deacon. So, if any of you as we normally do with the Women's Fellowship, we have a God of Honor. But 
due to the new normal in our life, we cannot do that. So I invite you, if you are a deacon in your church, or a member of the choir in your church, or any post that you're holding in your church that brings glory to God, just to stand before we light this candle in honor of our life. Thank you, Shaku Mayor, for coming. And as we light the candle, may you go into glory in the light of the Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of hosts, and God of might, and God of majesty. <coughs> We are gathered here today and many people, Lord, on their cell phones and on their TV screens, watching with broken hearts to bring farewell to our sister Aya. And so, Lord, we ask that you will come this morning with your gracious spirit and that you will touch each wound that has been slain upon our souls and our bodies and our minds. For in this few days, oh Lord, many of us have gone on a journey a journey of remembrance, a journey of grace, and a journey of friendship and fellowship, and a journey of love. And all that love, O oh Lord, was only possible because you made it so. And so we invite you this morning into our presence to comfort us, to bless us, and to give thanks for Ida's life. To thank you that you were so being gracious unto us and giving us a person that will also lead us the way in many, many ways. And as we will hear the tributes this morning of our life, oh God, may we bring glory to you for sharing her with us. We bless you, we thank you, and we honor you for this day. And we thank you that we are even allowed to have this service, particularly in the times that we are living. Father God, for your mercy and your grace and your many blessings, Come with your spirit, O oh Lord, of healing and comfort and restoration. Hover over us this morning as we take leave of our elder and our sister and our mother and our aunt and our friend and as we prepare to lay to rest into our eternal sleep. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, I, forgive me. Thank you, God, for teaching us how to pray, even though times are good and times are hard. Thank you for teaching us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, may thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Saint will lead us now in the place of worship session.
in all these precious moments that I will never forget. Thank you for always praying with me when I was so anxious and couldn't sleep. For always making me a cup of tea when I had to pour my all my for school at varsity. Today as I pray and thank God for placing me with a mother like you. I was truly blessed to have been the end of your car for many, many years. Staying each day with you by my side. I'm now gaining an angel that will walk along the road for the rest of my life. Today as I bid my farewell, I pray that God blesses your soul with love and eternal peace. Before we meet again, my mama. To my young mom, today is a very sad day. I never thought I'd have to say goodbye so quickly to you. And I want to thank you, Oma, for always loving me and looking after me when I was small. You will always be remembered, and there's a lot of memory that we share, and that I will never forget. Like whenever we came home from school, this woman on Friday, there will always be way to walk another and think of who's waiting. And you are not enough to eat while you're going away. I can't say that I'm happy, but I'm glad you know more suffering with pain, the late nights pain after you pain. Oma, you will be forever loved. I love you, my Oma. Dear Oma. You will be deeply missed. I will miss our late night conversation and even the special names that you gave me, such as Percy, Pietras, Opa Cross, and Maestro. <laughs> I'm really going to miss watching Judge Judy with you. Oh my, you really meant a lot to me, and we used to have a lot of fun, even if I got the most items of you. <laughs> I'm really going to miss your voice. You have a really special place in my heart, my Oma. I love you and I will always love you. Dear yeah, Oma, you meant a lot to me. I'm going to miss all the fun times we have played together. Every day after school, my Oma always made fun to play and have some fun with me. I'm going to miss people who just miss people. I love you so much and I will always love you. Thank you. And they the children. Morning, everybody. Good morning. To the one and only person who was always first to wish us on our birthdays, mm -hmm. anniversary, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and even Christmas who always took us back to the memories we thought we forgot, but was always just hidden in the corners of our hearts. Thank you, Mom, for always being there for us whenever we needed a listening ear and even a shoulder to cry on. When I, as your son, think back to when I first moved to Cape Town, I missed you terribly, but I got to speak to you regularly. And when you visited us in Cape Town, we were on our toes for you. Didn't want to make a mistake and just so happy that you visited. If I think back now, I wish I never gave you all those headaches and wasn't so naughty. I always thought you were hard on me, but today I can say I am the man I am because of all your life lessons. Everything you instilled in me, Mummy, I'm instilling in my son. Now it's our turn not to forget all the love, wise words thoughtful things and caring moments you share with us. We will always love you and will think of you every day for the rest of our lives. Love, Sean. Mother, nothing in life can ever fully prepare you for these kind of moments. The day of life and voice is silenced and all we have left is memories of what used to be. Really don't know how to say thank you for all Mom has done for me. I will miss your laughter, your great sense of humor, 
your love for music, singing in the kitchen, even though you did not know most of the words. It never stopped you, Mudder. Thank you for the many life lessons taught, whether it was taught the easy way or for the iron first you ruled with. Thank you for being such a strong woman in faith, always praying for us, raising us to be God-fearing. Whether we got home at 6 a.m., we were told that if we could spend all the time in other people's presence, we can spend that one hour on a Sunday in God's presence. The day I have been dreading the longest of time is now upon us. How do we continue as normal from here onwards? I know that where you are now is pain-free, no more tablets, no more insulin, and no more swollen legs. God showed us that He is in control. Always thought we had more time together, but God knew really best. Rest well, my mother, until we meet again. I love you. Tina. Yes, my mother is in a better place. Mm -hmm. These last three weeks has been a very difficult time for everyone, for us as a family. And seeing my mother like that, that was not the type of person she was. It was hard, and it is hard, and there will also be days ahead where we will question why. But we comforted and know that she is in a better place. She is with her maker. Mm -hmm. And to that we are eternally grateful. I just want to end up with a poem from me. I can find it. When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not there to see. If the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today. While thinking of the many things we didn't do to say, I know how much you love me as much as I love you. And each time that you think of me, I know you must me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand. An angel came and called my name and took me by the hand, and see my face was ready, in heaven far above, and that I'd have to leave behind the house I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could relive yesterday, just even for a while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you and maybe see you smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. And when I thought of worldly things I might must come tomorrow, I thought of you, and when I did, my heart was full in sorrow. But when I walked through heaven's gate, I felt so much at home. When God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, This is eternity. And all I promised you today, your life on earth is past. But your life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same way, there is no longing for the past. You have been so faithful, so trusting, and so true. Though there were times you did some things that you knew you shouldn't, but you have been forgiven, and, I'm, and now at last you're free. So won't you come and take my hand and share my life with me? So when tomorrow starts without me, don't you think we're far apart? For well, every time I think of me, I'm right here in your heart. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. 
who we are, to the family and the friends and the fellowship staff, who we are for being guests, our diaconates and our members, young and old in our church, we wish to extend our sincere condolences to you and your families, and we trust that God, as you have just said in our dream, in our evil, that she is home and ready. No tomorrow of here, but eternity for her in God's kingdom. I got it. I battled this week to put something together, and I had quite a few things that I wanted to say in a different direction. I got it. Woman of God, my sister in faith and my sister in Christ. Mother and matriarch of this church, and also elder. Ida's journey with the Fear of Congregational Church began in 1979 when they moved to Fear of in Prospect Drive. I met her when I moved in here in 1980, and thus began our journey together as neighbors, as family, and as friends. We went then on a new pilgrimage of faith when we started to join them, the founder members of this church. Ida had a beautiful voice, loved singing, praising God, worshipping God with fabulous choruses and melody. And I learned from her early in our friendship and our relationship. Through our praises and through our times of prayer, that she, at a young age, gave her life to the Lord. And then eventually I met her family in Jordan. Her siblings, her parents, her grandmother, and her grandfather, and I realized why she had given her life to God. They were a wonderful, practicing Christian family. They depended on God for everything. They were a beautiful, worshiping family. Their lives were a testament to the goodness of God and the grace of God. No wonder I had done that so early in her life. I just dance with God. Him holding her firmly, clasping her hand, leading and moving her in the right direction, guiding her to the music of faith, of grace and hope and mercy, and her feet swiftly, swimly, finally on the ground, dancing to the steps of God. Her music, when she was dancing, also came out. But as we all know, and that for every one of us, our dances are not always pleasant and perfect and endearing. Because adversity steps in, challenges come, you are challenged with your health, and you lose the people you love. And all that came along in her life. And so the music that she had to dance to sometimes was not good. But she never gave up on the music. And she never stopped dancing. And the most important thing is she never let go of her dancing partner. Mm. He held her firmly and led her where she had to go until the storm was over. Dancing and gliding around her problem and never forgetting to pray. She danced the dance of faith, holding God and holding his hand tightly. The last time I spoke to Ida was two weeks ago. Then she went for the second time into ICU and she said to me, but make for me. Mm. And so today, I stand here on behalf of our church, the Fear of Congregational Church, and I give thanks to God for blessing us with a remarkable woman of faith. Our church and its people, the Fear of Congregational Church, have a great loss. We were the beneficiaries of this beautiful dance as she danced with God, of the music she made with God. Her ministry in song, even when her eyesight was failing, she would give us lessons and start to sing it because she couldn't read it. 
the determination of praise and worship and preaching, a love for family, leadership and commitment, singing in the choir, faithful to the women's fellowship, joining Iris and the lady called Baby in a trio just to proclaim the gospel of God in music. Using every opportunity in music, everyone knew about Ida's love for God. Today that voice is silent, no longer to be heard, but will be forever remembered with great love and compassion and thanksgiving. We bless and thank God this morning for his gracious gift to us as a church. Ida will always be held close to our hearts and much love. To Jacques, Liesel, King, her siblings, extended families, and all your families, may God hold you all close to his heart and tight to his bosom and give you comfort and may you learn how to dance with God. Through this trying time you are going through, sing the melodies, dance in your kitchens, dance at your work, Dance in your bathroom. Dance in front of your mirror. Do the dance of faith with God. I am going to ask you today to do something very really special. We live in a new normal. We are living in a pandemic. And everybody sitting here has got a pain and an ache and a heartache. And nobody can hug each other. I wanted to hold this job, but I couldn't. So I am going to ask you, to hold yourself this morning like this. Hold yourself, even you who are sitting at the TV and on your TV screen. Hold yourself and ask God to comfort you. Hold yourself and say to God to heal the brokenness within you. And as you do that, hold your sister, hold your mother, hold your friend and bid her farewell. Wish her well on her journey as she travels into eternity. And so, as she soars with eagle's wings, when she gets there, may there be a host and an entourage of angels and a family that she loves so much. A grandfather and a grandmother, her parents, Desmond and her sisters. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will just Rejoice as she enters into your kingdom. And may you, I see Jesus Christ face to face. On the 3rd of March, 1991, we sang in this church, Glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. We sang to God's choir in the church. You are now going to be singing in God's choir in the church, my sister. You are going to be praising God in His presence. Mm. And so, oh God, I ask that you bless her and you make your face to shine upon her and you lift your countenance upon my sister, our mother, our friend, <coughs> our elder, our matriarch, and that you give her and grant her God's eternal peace. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank Sante, Lidl, and Marianne for the views. Now we will have a family a musical item. Precious Lord, 
Good morning, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Shark, Lizzo, Keelan, we have celebrated many things in this church. And I suppose just in the course of life, this is also kind of those that we are going to go through. Thank you for the opportunity to do this obituary, this eulogy for your mom. It is something I don't, I didn't ever think I would do. You see, because your mother, Auntie Iris, and I always fantasized that we would grow old together, very old together, mm -hmm. to a point of where we would not have a coherent thought and we would not be able to speak sensibly. So we were never going to be asked to do this. That I have a coherent thought or a sensible thought uh, uh, to speak sensibly right now will be debatable. But to use a cliche, your mom has gone to soon. May Mikey or Miss Romy, we didn't think that this time would come so soon. An obituary normally covers a person's life, so let me just start with the, with the effects of Ida's life. Born to Thomas and Mabel Bensel on the 15th of February 1952, Ida Olga Frances Bensel was the eldest daughter of six siblings. For some reason, when we were born in the 1945s to 50s, our parents gave us lots of names. <laughs> So many of us are sitting with that, and I always used to think, you know, if we, by the time we finish writing all our names in grade one, the bell is rung will be. But anyway, that was how it was. <clears throat> I think it was also an influence of the British royal family because the children have lots of names. Be that as it may, I grew up in a loving and caring and close family, which Marion also referred to. She spent a lot of time with her cousins, Gina and Ernest, at the home of the grandmother. I need to put this down, sorry. In with her son. I was school in Davidsonville at the primary school there and completed her high school at Krugersdorf High School. She married Lisa Tati in January 1974. And Lisa, much as I said, I wouldn't speak out at WF because we have a saying that what happens in WF stays there. But Lisa was coming here. Oh, yes, he was coming here. Up that time, just leaving. Okay. Your children, Sharp, Lisa, and Keenan the light of their lives. Of course, when the five grandchildren came along, they became the famous of the atmosphere. Ida's work career spanned many years, starting off at Joffe in Goodwood, and later she worked with her sister-in-law, Diane, at Tension Envelopes. Her last working company was Fiction, where she was fondly known as Auntie I. A name which says all, a woman to be respected, trusted, and loved. So those are more or less the facts of Ida's life. However, there was so much more to this beautiful, by woman, really beautiful woman, woman of faith, whose life reflected her roots, the strong family ties, and her faith in God. I see Ida spent a lot of time with her grandmother. She was very attached to her grandparents. And we learned to know especially Papa, as he was known, because he stayed for quite some time with her in fear. I remember Ida's mourning of her grandparents, her grandmom at the party. And it spoke to the testimony of this bond of love. She was also particularly close to her siblings, and a testimony to that, I walked in here with that Ellen and we both burst into tears. And her and Ellen, growing up, loved to dance. 
And so they danced and even influenced Judy Chutinia. Who wanted to go with? This irritated the two older sisters because you see they had other missions to carry on to, like meeting boyfriends. However, in later life, our sister, along with her husband Desmond, took on the parenting role of her younger siblings and Shona and Charlie stayed with them for a while. Many of us learn to know her family because of her close ties with them, with her with their children, and we were often brought into her prayer life as she shared the concerns and joys of her siblings and the extended family with us, and always the request would be, but that's a One of the best times was when she spent the Sunday afternoons with the extended family, singing and praising the Lord, which Marion also referred to. We knew all about that. And sometimes, some were invited along with to those gatherings. This brings me to the essence of the strong woman of faith. Ida had the most beautiful singing voice Marion also referred to. And she used that to honor and praise God. This church at Free Roof can recall many, many times of being blessed by the voice of Ida as she sang praise the Lord. She was an actress of note too, by the way. And yes, she would take the role in a play or skit that was produced mostly by the Women's Fellowship in this church and make it her own. And as one of the authors of some of those skits, I don't sometimes think it's I didn't like those lines. <laughs> but Ida had a feel for what had to be said. And so she would add her own brilliant interpretation, making the whole thing so much better. She was always willing to be part of anything that held God's message, whether in song, word, or deed. Many of us will remember her trying to show us the song when the role is called up beyond her mm. while we were doing charades. Mm. We still laugh. Because that was how she was. And none of us will ever listen to Ricardo's daddy <laughs> without remembering the day she stood there in front. I think she put on Michael Jackson glove and sang the lead. I think you stood up for yourself. This church just rocked that day. She just took it and made it her own. That was her. She had a very keen sense of humor. Often seen the funny in something before anyone else. And I must tell you, that often brought many of us into very awkward situations. The sharp and I'm going to talk about the funny times your mother had us. We didn't know if we must laugh or <laughs> That was an our trip to Israel, we'll never forget her willingness. Somebody lost their luggage, and so Ida came along with clothing five times too big, offering, yeah, you can use mine. This caused so much laughter. But along with that, those of us who went on the trip to Israel in 2005 will always remember how she and Iris Walters sang throughout the trip. As soon as the guy had given the information for the day and the bus started up, they would start singing. And they sang and sang and the bus load of people sang and sang from point A to point B. So much so that the guy and the bus driver who were of the Jewish faith started to sing along with us. And they would say, sing that song. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus, and I would think, okay, we'll be giving to you also, or any other song that caught your attention. I repeat, I was a strong woman of faith. And yes, as all of us have, we have our ups and our downs, but her faith in her Savior never left her during the down times and was evident in the good times. For me, the greatest testimony came in the beautiful rendition of the song. You know, and if I knew you were going to be at Campbell, I was going to ask us to sing it, but 
In the presence of the Lord there is joy. Mm. In the presence of the Lord there is peace. In the presence of the Lord there is healing. Lord, I stand in your presence with my life. With my whole life, Lord, I love you. I remember sitting over there and she was gone and she was facilitating a women's fellowship service and she looked at me and she said, what song shall I sing? And we decided on this. And some years later, when the women's fellowship to have a special service in Boston, I asked her to come and sing this for us and I can just still see her standing so proud in Jesus' name and singing with my whole life, Lord. I love you. You are in that presence, Ida, Olga, Francis, Tate, and Wenzel. You are experiencing that joy, peace, and healing. You have loved the Lord with all your love, to put your love. Thank you for being in our presence during our earthly lifetime. We are more than richer for it. Thank you very much. We will now proceed with the scripture reading. Tina will be doing the scripture reading and recording in John 14, verse 1 to 6. Good morning, congregation. Um, Scripture reading is taken from John 14, verses 1 to 26. Do not be worried, and I've said, Jesus told them, believe in God, believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Tom said to you, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I think we don't have much time left as we have to leave at 10 as well as 10. I'm going to play a song by Jimmy Swedet that would have amazed me.
Beloved, let me just summarize the sermon and we can just imagine and the idea see what heaven means to her. Heaven is a place of perfect holiness. Just remember this family and friends. Heaven is a place of perfect holiness. Consider the yaw of heaven. There is no sickness, no pains, no aches. Consider the music of heaven. But on the island is singing the hallelujah song to the glory of God to all eternity. Consider the reunions in heaven, and I think even Mary and we alluded to it. And our speakers, the union <coughs> of the bears, consider the reunion in heaven. Goodbye is said word in every language, beloved. No one likes to be parted from a loved one. Separation from love, one is what causes us to be sad today. Because love is all and life is all about relationships. But the good news in heaven, there shall be no more death to separate us from anyone we love. In conclusion, beloved, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, family, is the way to heaven. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man come unto the Father but by me. And we either had a personal relationship with the Maker. And unlike other funerals, people are worried when they bury loved ones because as the wrath that work. And they either demonstrated a life and a love for Christ. May God comfort you as we allow Auntie Aida to receive a crown from a creator and maker. Amen. Beloved, we will now ask Brother Lawrence to do the vote of thanks and then we will just have a closing prayer and uh, listen just to the dead mass played by him. We thank you, everybody else in the church, for doing the service today. To Jacques, and Bear, Jordan, to Lisa Lance Chante, to Keenan, Karenis, Kevin, Tristan, Taylor, and all the extended family, know that your grief is our grief and that you are not alone. Like you, we will miss your mom. And she was always so active and visible, especially in the church. I direct her mom in her family life and in the church. Here in the church, in the women's fellowship, in the choir, in the diaconate, and most importantly, we will miss her was for the praise and worship. Because even when she was ill, when she could hardly see, the praise and worship was the first and foremost commitment that I had in this church. Our other commitment in this church, this year, the first service, next year, the first service in the new year, as a tradition was either service, mm -hmm. and we will especially miss her at that time. We thank God for the life of Ida and the opportunity that we had to share our lives with her. We thank God for Ida's commitment to the church and the example that she set for her family and for many others. The family, they have enhanced the prayer of Congregational Church for their spiritual support during the time of her illness and during their illness. The family also wish to acknowledge the doctors and staff at North Park Hospital who supported Ida in a brave fight to recover. 
Father, we thank you for the for your service and support. If I know as yes, would wish me to thank my family and friends for the love and support that they provided over the years, and to say thank you to the church for affording her the opportunity to fulfill the spiritual journey. On behalf of the family, special thanks to all who have offered words of comfort, material and spiritual support during the term of Ida's illness. Last but not least, the family thanks everybody for being here in the church and those who are connected on the internet as we celebrate our life today. There's a saying that says, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Ida has left lots behind and will always be remembered. We commit her to the love and care of the Almighty and pray that she will be blessed with all the heavenly privileges. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, can we rise for the blessing and then after the afternoon, the Lord made for us. And now, in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, 